In this video I want to talk about something that's become a real irritation for those of us in the TV repair business and that's finding replacement boards from salvage TVs that we can use to fix the TVs that we're unable to diagnose on a component level. Now ideally you want to be able to troubleshoot every TV on a component level such as replacing an individual transistor, resistor, capacitor, or whatever because you're going to make more money that way. But unfortunately you run into a lot of difficult situations like I did with this one. I had a problem with a couple of bad MOSFETs on this heat sink here. <clears throat> one of them I didn't even need my meter to see there was an issue. Let's see if I hold a magnifying glass here. You can see the way that pretty much cracked when it overheated. Not much left there. So it was a no-brainer to know I needed to replace a couple MOSFETs. But the problem was that on the back side of the MOSFETs, what appears to be the driver transistors had uh, they were uh, un I wasn't able to identify what they were Let's see if I can focus that in there and each transistor appeared to have a set of driver transistors underneath I found a what appeared to be a Zener diode and a couple other components that checked kind of weird on my resistance test and uh, anyway when I saw the board for sale on eBay for about 50 bucks, I figured, well, great. That'll be a quick solution. Get the TV back to my customer real quick. Well, the new board comes in, supposedly taken from a TV that was damaged uh, in shipping or had a bad display or something along that line. The advertisement said it was in good working order. And take the magnifying glass out. First thing I want to do is double check those same transistors that I had a problem with on mine. And guess what? Before I even installed the board, I could see I had two bad uh, MOSFETs. So I wasn't a happy camper. In fact, uh, I left a negative on the guy's eBay account. I hate to do that. I generally like to work it out with people because I know how important good feedback is. But because he had advertised this as having come from a TV that was in working order when it was removed, I figured, well, he pretty much earned that negative. Anyway, this is an ongoing issue. It's not just with eBay sellers, but uh, I won't name names. Uh, remember, one of the big companies that a lot of people are familiar with that offers uh, reconditioned, or not reconditioned, salvage boards uh, sold me a couple of bad boards. Actually, they've sold me three bad boards now out of five, out of five orders. Three of them were bad, and uh, they also claim that they were out of uh, TVs that were in working order when the boards were removed. So, I imagine if a person doesn't have any principles, they can make a lot of money that way because probably a lot of people that buy the boards aren't going to bother to return them. In fact, I've had some people call me up here and they say, Dave, what am I doing wrong? I've replaced every board on my TV and it still doesn't work. And my first question is, well, where did you get your boards from? Don't automatically assume it's your fault. I mean, ideally, you don't want to be guessing at which board it is. There are certain tests you can do to figure that out and I put a lot of videos on YouTube hopefully you, you can watch them and get an idea which board you need to replace but uh, for what it's worth I just wanted to share that I was a little bit irritated tonight when I found I had a just ordered a bad board and uh, now I'm gonna have to wait even longer to get another one I think what I'll do is the next person that offers a board for sale on eBay after I bid on it I'll give them a little warning that you know if they're pulling my chain I'm going to be leaving a negative feedbacks and Maybe you'll give them a chance to back out or something. Anyway, thanks for listening. I hope you found this helpful.